Welcome to the JSPT podcast. Just some people talking. This is episode thirty soon, and today, <laughs> today, <laughs> today, today, me and me and Josh are going to be recording our right, what sports talk, it? sports talk episode, Third sports talk three? episode. Is it three? Is it one? Yeah, bro. Oh Who yeah, because the first one was the you. Were, ah, ah, shit, that's crazy. All right, let's get it. Third. Um, and Aaron's just here listening for timestamps. Yeah, that shit wild. Aaron, actually, he's not. I don't, he, I don't know, bro, dude. We weren't supposed to acknowledge him, bro. He was supposed to be like a guy behind the curtain. Damn. But haven't you seen The Wiz? He, he tech crew, bro. You don't say shit. He tech haven't crew. Haven't you seen The Wiz? Yeah, I've seen The Wiz. Come on now. That, that's a different story. Richard bro. Pryor's black asses behind the curtain. And they they yeah. broke the fourth wall, okay? That's yo, on them. Yo, if anybody hasn't seen The Wiz, then you're not woke. Or you're not black. Yeah, or you're not black. <laughs> I was gonna say facts, bro. It's it's facts. All right, so I guess we could. What do you want to tell people how your week's been? Or I mean, we ain't really gotta talk about my week. We can just talk about today. How are you? I'm day? being I'm being simp. I will not go into it. I'm not telling nobody no more. I'm just gonna say I'm being simp. I'm out here missing people I shouldn't be missing. But we're gonna go act like I don't have uh toxic relationship dependencies. So you guys have, you know, you guys all do good. Oh, you are having boy life. issues. Yeah, okay. Something like that. Pretty much, yeah. I don't know. Kinda. Um, my day was pretty good. My past couple days have been they've been alright. I hate my I hate my jobs. Damn. I don't hate them. What? I don't hate them. But I'm it's like time to move on. But you I'm just finish, been there for I'm gonna finish the school year out. But it's time to move on. I just find myself hitting like real like emotional lows for no reason. But luckily, like kids are just sometimes just kids, and they're just funny and charming, and they cheer me up sometimes. Yeah, you know I what? Some dumb shit, and I was just be like, you know what? Life is good. I've been there before. I rem- remember I was working that job with the mm-hmm. kids. I've been there before. The kids make you want to stay because they're they're decently entertaining. But like, I just wish I didn't have to be so strict with them in the after school program. Ah, uh. because like regulations and stuff and different things involving like what the higher ups want for the program with like, they're literally treating the after program. Like we're teachers. We have to come in with like lesson plans and yeah. all this extra stuff. And it's really draining the fun that shit to me. nature of yeah. the program itself, you know? And there's that also, shit, that shit right to me. I recently learned that a lot of the rules and standards are set based on like elementary school, kindergarten kids, because, mm-hmm. because we're an umbrella like portion of a bigger organization that mainly works with small children. So yep. we have rules. So we had so we have all these little nuances and rules for fucking babies when these kids are in middle school. Like they can they're more responsible than that. So yeah, but you know, that's the whole thing. But one thing that has been nice, you know, my wrist is injured, but I've really been wanting to still work out. So I bought this vertical jump like program. Been doing it for a couple of days. And all my time of working out, my butt cheeks have never been sore like this. So either I'm going to be jumping higher soon or my ass is going to look great. Either way, it's a win-win. And if I get both, I guess that's still a win-win? Or is that a win-win-win? Do you know? What happened to Joshua? See, this is why I'm here. (laughs) Are you going to have to cut this out? That was my fault. <laughs> Literally calls me. It was like, what do you want to eat? I, I said, anything. I don't care. But what does that mean? <laughs> so, I guess let's move on to the sports shit. If we hear some smacking, I'm eating some orange slices. Uh, so, let's start us off with the Super Bowl. Um, I know I probably didn't sound too excited about it last week, but I watched it. it was, I peer um, pressured him into watching it, y'all. I just want to know that. No, you did not. I got invited out to a birthday party. Yeah, and I told this nigga, I was like, bro, it's just it's the Super Bowl. Like, I mean, you either watch it, you don't, but like, I'm sure it's gonna be on in that bitch. And he was like, Yeah, bro. I mean, if I look at it, I will. If I don't, I don't. It just depends on what's going on. That's him basically saying, I'ma watch it, because you just made me feel like I need to watch it. Facts. I watch it like most years anyway. I can't think of the last time I missed it. I peer pressured him last year too, y'all. I just want y'all to know that. Okay. Anyway. Um, my first Super Bowl moment ever, though, was when um, Seahawks didn't let Marshawn Lynch run the ball. I remember that. 
That shit blew my mind. Even my, like, no football knowledge having that. So I was like, oh, they're going to run it. And they did it. I was like, <laughs> that, that was, was so crazy. stupid. That shit was so dumb. So anyway, um, the Kansas State Chiefs won, or at least that's what Donald Trump Kansas, thought. Kansas, Kansas State Chiefs, yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Kansas City, by the way, everybody. If you yeah, cannot Kansas know. City, Missouri, but apparently our, They're, our it's our on lovely, the board. Lovely president, a lovely, lovely president didn't know the difference. And, Kansas um, City is on both sides, <laughs> but they are actually in Missouri. The team, I'm yeah, ass, bro, silly. So yeah, that's Trump being Trump again. Um, Trump. I mean, cool Trump. Cool Trump. <laughs> I don't know what the, the fuck to say. Okay, Trump. Fuck him, dude. Um, the the best thing about the show, to be honest, was the halftime show. Most years I don't feel that way, but this year, dude. You didn't like Lady Gaga last year or two years ago? It was good, but it wasn't like the highlight of the night. Lady Gaga gold. Yeah, she's gold. But she good. She the best. Shakira, Shakira and J-Lo. That shit was fire. That shit was sexy as fuck. I had my phone out. I was recording the the TV like I was at the fucking performance. Like, I was like, like you know people that be at concerts just filming the whole thing, not actually enjoying it? Right. That was me in the bar. I was just like, oh, no, I got to have this for later. <laughs> they was fine as hell, bro. And apparently, a lot of other people thought so too. I see some NBA players. What did like Giannis tweet? He's like, "This halftime show is about to get me in trouble." Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the halftime show was was uh probably one of the best. And um, I guess the final thing about the Super Bowl, other than the actual game, but who cares? That apparently Jay Z and Beyonce sat. During the during the um, national anthem, and like of course a lot of people were like, oh my god, blah blah blah, and it was like making a big deal out of it. Yeah, like, oh, they're protesting, they're protesting, but I mean, yeah, Hove Hove like explained the situation. Um, Josh, you want to get into it? Yeah, it was a bit wild, honestly. He went to Columbia University, and they brought it up and said, "Well, most people thought you were protesting." He's like, "Uh." Sorry, I wasn't. Which basically, like, it's just like, obviously the media is going to turn anything how they want to turn it. And he basically just shut that shit down. Because he's like, he basically told him, if I wanted to protest, I'm on stage. I have a stage. I'm not going to be quiet. I'm going to be loud about it. Mm -hmm. It don't make sense for me to sit down and protest. I was just working. I guess he was, you know, working, looking at the, the, uh, like how the show was going, what kind of what kind of mic they were using, what kind of speakers were around, you know, trying to figure out the sound levels because it's like for for it to reach audience, you got to have a certain you know sound system and speakers that obviously makes it sound like a performance is actually there, you know, and good. And he's like, it was good. I was just admiring the work, doing my own work at the same time. The niggas was really hard doing the most. And I think Hove also said. That he thinks the, the actual protest that happened in the show, like that's what was. And if he had a, any sort of protest, he was like, look at the show. The show itself was the protest, not me sitting down trying to analyze the show, making sure the show's going well. So, yeah, that was just kind of funny. I think um, this is one of them things with like football now. If you ever like sit down, down to tie your shoe or sitting down to rest your bad hip, you anti American. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. Speaking of wild shit, um, you know, um, I think I think the way you say the nigga name is um Javonta Davis. I can't remember. I, I don't know Javonta Davis. I don't know the fuck that. You don't know me, him? Let me okay, find so fuck out. He's a boxer. I think he's still undefeated. He's um signed um uh, like Mayweather Mayweather pro- not well not productions obviously, but whatever the hell. I think like you know like like the money team or whatever the hell. He's one of like Mayweather's boys. And um, I've I've only seen him fight once. Oh, I do know this nigga. Yeah, like you have to know him because you see him all the time. But I like you never see his highlights. You just see him doing shit. And um, the one fight I saw him fight though, he I think he beat the shot of his Mexican nigga, and he was wearing these big ass like Cookie Monster shorts. I swear to God, it looked like Cookie Monster. He was at a basketball game. I think it was a celebrity basketball game, and uh, yeah, he's been charged with um. Like smacking up his shorty, <laughs> or I think his wife. Let me see. No, okay. 
um, it was his former girlfriend. I think it's former as of now because he just like grabbed her up by her collar and was like, like kind of like yanked her out of the fucking um gym. Uh, it was you know it was just I guess another like domestic thing and uh yeah he like snatched her up and just like pulled her away and it's like it was it was in front of everybody too it's like i don't know why i don't know bro it's well it's good he did it in front maybe a good thing he did it in front of people because i mean if he was doing it behind doors we wouldn't have known yeah i guess that's true too yeah but like i don't know i don't know what's wrong with this little nigga bro because every time i hear about him it's him it's never him fighting it's always some like well him fighting but not in the ring <laughs> it's like like it's always like some some like extra shit i, I always hear like him talking shit i don't know something or maybe i'm just bugging i don't know yeah so that's unboxing news moving on to the what's been popping off for the past couple of days is um all these trades in the nba due to the trade deadline yes yeah oh wait actually before we get into that i just want to read off one little zion um dick suck post that came from bleach report that i liked because um i guess you could say i'm a zion shrill but not a dick sucker uh, <laughs> and uh <laughs> i had to clarify that um so basically it was just this post that uh bleach report put up a couple days ago where they were like uh zion zion's explosiveness is wild the pelicans rookie missed 24 shots in his first five games he rebounded 12 of them on his own um this is more so just trying to like talk some shit to my pops who said because i was telling my pops man this kid's a bully he just bullies dudes he just bullies dudes my dad's like oh but you know he gonna play against real men now real pros i don't think all that bullying shit gonna work and, da, da, da. and i'm not saying no. it's gonna last forever but he's bullying the fuck out of these niggas too yeah he done grabbed a whole ball pounds. out of Giannis' hand the other day yeah, that's pounds, just 300 fucking pounds like okay i know he don't weigh 300 no more he's like 270 probably but that's that's a big motherfucker that's it. He's big. He's gonna have injuring himself though. Is he too big? He's I know. Still- I, I I'm still on the boat that he needs to lose weight. He needs to get down at least two fifty. But he's big as shit. He can be bullying motherfuckers. The fuck? Yeah, corn fed nigga. He do what he do. Man, that nigga eat whole chickens. His mom did. His mom was just taking the whole chicken, cutting the head off, leaving the feet on that bitch, and just throwing it in the fryer. This nigga eat the whole shit. Motherfucker, so damn big. He that big. This shit kind of yeah. wild. It's crazy. All right, so moving into these trades. Um, so I guess the most eventful of it all, I think, is just the Grizzlies, um, Andre Iguodala thing, because there's like static there. But Josh doesn't think so. I don't think it should be as I didn't think it was as much static as it is. But again, I know that the the Grizzlies have a problem with it. But Andre Iguodala was just looking at it like this, bro. Hey, they got rid of me to clear up cap space for D'Lo. Mm-hmm. He was hoping that they would have traded his ass earlier in the, you know, during the offseason. And Memphis was like, no. It didn't make any sense. They could have bought him out his contract. It wasn't much left on it. It was, it was like, I think 16, maybe not 16. I forgive it. Was 16.9. It, was, it wasn't high. It definitely was not that high. Mm-hmm. Either buy him out his contract or trade him. And they was not trying to do that. They, like, they were not really going. They were like, nah, we good. Mm-mm, nah. And it's like, damn. Then, you know, he's like, all right, well, fuck it. I'm going to sit on the bench. I ain't going to play. His ass sat down. You know what's crazy? The whole time he was sitting, he was promoting his book. That nigga made up. Killing on his book, too. Fuck that nigga book. I'll burn his book. That nigga need to play. Bro, it, or he I'm, needed to play. He needed like, to play. I'm, I'm with that. I hate when niggas sit. My thing is, bro, yeah, it's like, get over yourself. All right, fine. You got traded. That's the game, nigga. Like, your beef is not with the Grizzlies. It wasn't with the Warriors either, though. Because he understood. Yeah, so my thing is, like, play. Like, and I guess his thing, and I guess in the long run, it paid off. Like, like it paid off. Because now he's out of there. He got moved to Miami on the two-year. And that's a good um, team. Huh? What? And that's a good team. And I feel like that's a team that he feels like is will be probably more of that contender that he felt like he deserved, which I completely understand. He's wrong for that. Day. He's wrong for that because the, the, the uh, Grizzlies are on a run. Yeah, but the thing, is, the thing is, I don't think he wanted to be well, – well, first of all, it, it, at the beginning of the season, I don't think no one expected him to be this good. And once the nigga started sitting, you can't just get up and like, okay, you're nice. Like, <laughs> yeah, you like nah, nigga, That's what they you. wanted him to do. They were like, all right, thank you, bet, finally, but, bet. But the thing – and yeah, and that's the thing, too. He was getting brought into to Memphis as, like, what I would think is, like, as a vet. A mentor. He's going to help teach the young niggas. Yeah, but I guess he's like, nah, I'm a vet who trying to get – who trying to – 
bust some ass before I go. Like, I'm trying to cook. I'm not trying to be a mentor. And I guess that's what it was. It was just like a, you know, but it's like Andre, like, I don't know, bro. I, I don't know what else he expects from his career. He's had a great career, I think. Especially that upswing run with the Golden State Warriors at the end. Like, that's cemented. Now you can fade off. I don't know. I don't I don't know, bro. Like I feel like I feel like that was very like like I was fucked. And I was like disrespectful to basketball fans in general. I know you not I know he didn't have any like loyalty necessarily to the Grizzlies because he kind of just showed up, he kind of just popped up and just didn't play. And he probably doesn't really care what the Grizzly fans feel like. And you know, but that was that was wild to the other players on the team. That's disheartening like young niggas that you could, you know, take under your wings. Or hey. in his case, his big ass biceps. And he could have a new fan base, but I don't know, whatever. I mean, as far as the Grizzlies go, him being gone don't hurt y'all none. Uh, yeah. Dylan Brooks keep keep getting better. I I've been I've been on Dylan Brooks, uh, I guess fan list since he got in. I watched him at Oregon. I said the Grizzlies was a great team. That's when they had Conley still. So I was like, there's a great team for him to fall into his role. They didn't have a strong two guard. He was coming off the bench and he was still he was averaging some pretty decent points for a little bit. Not like crazy. It was some it was a couple games. It wasn't like he was like averaging. Actually, he wasn't averaging shit, but he was having that. a couple of good games. I love that shit he was talking. No, I respect that shit he was talking because you know what? He right. And too bad they can't cook their ass. Also, like this nigga was getting paid for, for like for doing nothing. Exactly. Yeah. That's the weirdest thing too with the NBA. It's like, whoa, hold up, nigga. Like if I don't show up to work, I don't get paid. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I mean, that's the one thing about the M- NBA that the NFL has definitely done right. You know, your ass don't play, you don't you don't get paid. Bitch. Like, no play, no pay. And that's how they are in the NFL. I've always said that the NBA should be like that, too. Especially if- saying injuries, but nigga just saying, I don't like this team. No, 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 exactly. Practice. Bro, he refused to come to the first practice. But see, that's the thing about NFL. Your ass get injured, your ass might be out the contract, too. So I'm just saying, like. Yeah, I know. I respect that. I feel like, yeah, okay, that's fucked up. I'd rather players get free money than players getting ripped off. Because these owners no, are no, no. way more than, like, you know. No, no, I, I fuck with it. But, like, I'm so. telling you, I think the NBA should adopt it. I think, honestly, they rules should be switched. I think the NFL should have more guaranteed contracts. And I think the NBA should have very cutthroat. Because there's been too many cases where, like, niggas be like Rondo. Niggas be like Lamar Odom. Niggas be like anybody. Brandon Jennings. Anybody. Your ass just, I don't want to play. I ain't playing. Then your ass end up like Lamar Odom out here snorting crack in a fucking bar and shit, hitting bitches. Cheating on your wife. Your wife that's on national TV, reality TV. Bitch, get the fuck out of here. By the way, stop giving these niggas checks, bro. Like, I can't wait till we find a way to trade him. They so can't play him. Play, play him and show him really what Memphis is about. They can't play him. Well, yeah. Two games already done with the Heat. Yeah, yeah. But next year, maybe. Yeah, hopefully. But yeah. Hopefully. I, I really like that. And I also like how John Morant, like, co-signed it or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, like, he co-signed it. And then Steph jumped in and shared the thing of him being like a – it was like, Steph, what what was the point of that? Like, what was Steph trying to say? That Andre's a, like, what, a, he's above them? No. Steph, go sit your ass down and heal your hand, bitch. You shouldn't be texting at all. I don't I don't know what Steph was trying to say with that tweet. And then Ja tweeted back at Steph. I forgot what Ja said, but – Steph tweeted um Andre holding up the chip and the finals MVP he won or whatever, right? Yeah, he tripped. And oh, and then um job ja, um replied with the um with um KD holding up the the chip and the finals MVP. And then um and then uh, I think uh like a like a like a interviewer asked Ja about it all and he ja was like, nah, like they no beef with Steph. Plus I talked to him too after and it's like, now nah, we cool. And I respect him. I definitely like respect him and I look up to him. And I ain't scared of him. <laughs> So, yeah, no. so yeah, so so I like that. I like that, but yeah, yeah I don't scared know. Of nobody. It, it just seemed like a foul thing to do, Andre. Like I feel like you could have, but I mean, I don't know. It worked out for him, so maybe he knew what he needed to do. He just needed to really be a brat about it, and, and he'll get the place where he no, wanted. To play. And I don't even think he was really a brat about it because he wasn't really complaining. It wasn't in the media that he was complaining. It was just that he wasn't playing. It was talked about for like the first week, and then nobody said shit about it. So he did what he was supposed to do. It wasn't like he was making a big to do. I respect I him for. Yeah, but I just feel like that's mad bratty. Just be like. Just take oh, yeah, it. no, it's Braddy. Not like, playing. You know, it's like, real, bro, Andre Iguodala, oh, Andre Iguodala is one of the smarter, smarter players in the league. A lot of people yeah. don't know that. He's actually one of the smarter players in the league. Him and Chris Paul are probably two of the smartest people. You know, Also, it, I forgot what he has, but he has some, like, place in, like, the league's player politics or whatever. So Yeah, he's, he's, a play, yeah, he's, he's, a play, he's in the player association, just like, like, uh, yeah. like Chris Paul's the president. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Andre's smart. You know what he's doing. He's going to end up being an analyst one day. He gonna look back on these days, 
Hopefully. Hopefully. I'd like to see that. Uh, so what was the full trade? So it seems like, yeah, so the Heat and the Grizzlies have agreed to an Andre Iguodala trade, sources tell. Um, this is from Sports Center, by the way, a tweet from them. Andre Iguodala, Solomon Hill, Jay Crowder to Miami. Um, Justice Winslow, Deion Waiters, and James Johnson to Memphis. No picks involved. I like um, Winslow. I like Deion Waiters. I feel bad that he's had a, a tough year this year. I don't know. I heard, I, I heard, I heard that they just plan on buying him out and get rid of him. Yeah, I heard that too. I, it kind of sucks though because he's not I heard bad. That they're just trying to buy him out. He's not bad, but I feel like but he doesn't fit. He doesn't fit. Like his there. attitude can fuck with the team. Yeah, he don't really fit in their lineup anywhere. He would be on the bench, coming coming off the bench. It wouldn't help them. I like Deion way back in the Cleveland days when he was with Kyrie. I like that was my Deion 2K when he was in college. Let's go, go like with me. Syracuse was actually a very good team. All right, so yeah. moving on to more shit. Uh, where where is it? Other trades. Okay. Yeah, so it was a three team deal in which the Knicks got fucked in the ass. Uh, <laughs> that, that's New York. Um, so the Knicks got um got Mo Harkless though. Mo that's Harkless not... and a first round pick. Mo Harkless is good. Uh, yeah. Uh, Washington. You don't but, think Mahorkless um, is good? You're crazy. He's a I'm great not, player. I'm he's not, not a starter. Him. I'm not psyched about it. I feel like it's an unnecessary move. He's a starter, actually. I took it back. He's like a starting two. He's pretty decent. Starting two, starting three. He's pretty decent. Um, what Washington got him, Jerome Robinson. And uh, the Clippers got Marcus Morris and Isaiah Thomas. Um, the second of which, apparently, they just plan on buying out. They got rid of him in an hour. That sucks. I really feel bad for, like, IT was good, man. They fucked him over. I don't know what the fuck. It was Boston's fault, honestly. It really is Boston's fault. He needed to stay there for like at least three more years in, like, in his career. He could have had three more solid they years. Had to, they had to move him for Kyrie, though. Yeah, I know. And I mean, it just... It's the plight of being a short nigga. Hey, he man. had a good run, though. Honestly, you know, I take that back. He got traded to... He got traded to the Cavs, and then he was injured, and then when he came back, LeBron didn't want to play with a nigga. Yeah. Fuck that, bro. He should. LeBron, no, like LeBron liked him though. LeBron was like, "Yeah, I take that nigga. Yeah, I take that nigga. Okay." <laughs> Lying up. He was salty. Kyrie left. He didn't want Kyrie to go. Oh well, bitch. Uh, Marcus Morris to the Clippers. People yeah. were clowning this, yeah. but I think that's a good like. I think that's a good fit because Marcus Morris, he's not like talent. He just a, he, he just a nigga on the court, <laughs> and I feel like it's just gonna give that team even more of that dog. <laughs> Like honestly, when I saw that trade, I was like, "Oh fuck!" Like that—that's what scared me. Like I was like, "Damn, nigga, they might be the best team in LA now. <laughs> they got Marcus Morris. He'll push the ball in his mouth." They the best team in LA without it. Nah, 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 nah. But now they might be because Marcus Morris will miss the whole playoffs to punch LeBron in his mouth. They are defensively unstoppable. And now with Marcus Morris, yeah. <laughs> you crazy? I'm just saying, Marcus Morris is—he's is, like an expendable like threat. You, you know what I mean? I believe you. I agree. Find that dog. I like, see y'all oh. in the finals when LA make it. LA makes it. Not LA. Yeah. Okay. Uh, y'all niggas clowning them, but they, they better than Lakers. It's just facts. Okay. Kawhi we'll Leonard is better than LeBron. You're. Bu- <laughs> I am not bugging. You're Honestly, bugging. I'm. I'm just gonna be real with you. LeBron's having a great a great year for who he is, but Kawhi Leonard is going to destroy that nigga. Mm-hmm. Okay. I really hope they, man, they, they got to play in the playoffs. It'd be weird. It'd I be hope crazy. they do. It'd be crazy if they did it. It'd be crazy if they didn't make it. Oh, imagine, yeah, like they both get knocked out before they match up. That shit crazy. <laughs> That'd be crazy as fuck. All right, so um, moving on to the Golden State trade. Do you want to go over that one? Yeah, I mean, I yeah. can. It don't make a difference. You, I mean, yeah, because that's your team. Like, your team is involved. Yeah, not really. Almost team. Maybe not team. Who knows? I was a Timberwolf fan for 13 some years, y'all. I don't try to know that. But this year it was going to be their last. Because this summer, they didn't get D-Lo. But guess what, bitch? Today, they got D-Lo. They traded D-Lo for Andrew Nasty Booty Ass Wiggins. Thank you, Jesus. He ain't on the team no more. Shouldn't have been on the team to begin with. We should still have Zach Levine. But it's whatever. I'm not mad. I'm not going to make no problems. I'm happy. D'Angelo Russell is finally a Timberwolf. He's on the team. With cat, and maybe something might happen. They always want to play with each other. They might pop off. They might be the best duo to ever play. 
You never know oh, at this point. You're gassing it now. <laughs> Wait till they get De- <laughs> Wait till they get Devin yeah, Booker. Then they honestly the best team to ever play. They will literally just be another. I don't know. They just gonna have a real Golden State vibes if they get Devin Booker. I mean, Devin Booker and D'Lo love playing with each other. No homo. Nah, maybe even not. homo. They best friends, so you know. And they light skin. And they are light skin. And so is Cat. Cat's mixed, actually. So. You know. Yeah, he's half black, half cat. True, true. Facts. facts. And they got pussy. Did you hear his comments about losing? What was his comments about losing? Yeah. Like the other day, he was just like, like they lost like seven games in a row. He was like, I'm sick as hell of fucking losing. <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> like literally, he just he's fucking cursed. I was like, I'm weak. Yeah, bro. I mean, they were winning, and then they posted some shit on the on the Wolves like page, and ever since then they've been on the downfall. Literally, like they posted some shit. It's like when you thought the Timberwolves weren't gonna be good this year, and then all of a sudden they just started being booty. It was crazy because they were like number five in the West off of yeah, week four. Okay, right? Yeah, they were doing great. They had like 10, 15 games under their like 10, 15 games wins, and then like only seven losses, and all of a sudden down the hill. Shit, crazy. Never post. Never post when you up. Always post when you're down. That's how you change your luck. Mm. Facts, 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 facts. That's a quote, y'all. I want to see that in all your IG captions this week, you bitch asses. Oh, God. Um, so, this is the best news of this whole trade deadline stuff. The Lakers are giving an open like workout or tryout or audition to J.R. Smith. The weed man, weed man himself. Weed man, weed man. Yes, yes, yes. Coming to LA. I, oh, I pray to God he comes to LA. That way. He's going to be high all the time. So, so that way, if we lose to the Clippers, I can blame it all on him. He gonna the be Lakers, all let him time. go to the Lakers. Let him go to the Lakers. I feel like he's LeBron's good luck charm. I know it might sound crazy because of that play. But I feel like he's good luck for LeBron. JR just has that, that aura. But he's just an entertaining nigga. So I feel like he just needs to be in the team. That's like that'd be fun. <laughs> like whenever he just be raining threes and he do that shit with his arms and he do the like the little prayer thing. He throws he has like the he has like the fucking the, the three fingers and the okay side. Like, high as shit. I love it. So I'm in full support of this. Um and uh and on a sadder note, to wrap this up, um Andre Drummond, a guy sent into the Cleveland and Cavaliers. Um for no fucking reason. Yeah, for no reason. Um, he's super sad about it too. Here's his um tweet. I'm gonna try to read it probably what his voice sounds like. If there's one thing I learned about the NBA, there's no friends or loyalty. <laughs> I've given my heart and soul to the Pistons. And to be have this happen, I swear to God, this is what he wrote. And to be have this happen with no heads up makes me realize even more that this is just a business. I love you, Detroit. Nigga, if you don't get your big black ass on the Cleveland and just wipe your tears, like, like, what the fuck you crying about? At least you get to change it up from one shitty city to a less shitty city. You know, I don't know. Like, I always see the big deal. Like, you wasn't going nowhere in Detroit. Detroit wasn't doing much nothing. And I feel like in Cleveland, at least you got um that young nigga. What's his name? Uh, Colin Sexton. Yeah. No, I mean, Detroit wasn't bad. No, like, they weren't. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like it was just like, I feel like homie was stagnant. Like, didn't them niggas draft him? Yeah, but he was always good. He was always a top center in the league. A top center, but just, I don't know. I just thought he was stuck in the mud. This might be a good thing for him. Change shit up. The one thing, I think, I think why he's hurt is probably because they shit, they, like, they, you know, they just traded him. They didn't give him no warning, nothing. That's fucked up, but that's the business. And yes, I feel him on that. But it's like, I think this might actually be a good thing for him, you know? Um, and I don't know. I feel like it, it could, I feel like some, 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 some interesting could start brewing in Cleveland now. Mm. Like, hold up, like, okay. He gets traded this offseason. But I mean, I mean, I don't know. Like, what if, what if, what if he makes, uh, what's his name? Uh, Kevin Love stay. Kevin Love's like, oh, we, we got another player. And then you got like uh, Kevin Love and him and Colin Sexton and then 
they're still ass, but you know, it's like it's it's part of the process. You know, what's his name that they drafted this year? Ooh, but they still at the bottom of the. Oh Lord Jesus. Yeah, they're dog shit, but I mean, I don't know. Maybe they draft someone good. Maybe they get Cole Anthony in the draft. Ooh. Actually, they can't use Cole Anthony. I don't know. I don't know who they could use. Oh well. No niggas need Jesus. I just look at the like the lineup. Forget everything I said, y'all. This Honestly, awful. I feel I feel awful for. It's almost as bad as when Michael Jordan left the Bulls. The niggas was just booty because all the players left too. Yeah, this is awful. And I see why Kevin Love is so damn mad. Sorry, Andre. It's tough, bro. But keep your head up. You still getting paid millions. Try to look on um the bright side of things. Yeah, for damn. real, honestly. I'll be sad as fuck too, bro. Have you seen this nigga's shoulders, by the way? This nigga be gone. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? He got something wrong with the shoulders. Bro, this nigga has like afros on his shoulders. His shoulders are so hairy. It's fucking disgusting. Look it up right now. Uh, anyway, uh, UFC 247. We're not going to get too much into this because we're going to cover the event when it happens. But, um, yeah. I guess stay tuned for that. Um, Josh, on a scale of 1 to 10, how excited are you for UFC 247? I mean, with the card in general, it's like a 7. And that's because there's a John Jones fight. Oh, so you're not that excited, huh? I mean, it could be like an eight because Derek Lewis also fights, but and Valentina. It Jeff seems Chico. like every time John Jones is fighting, Derek Lewis is fighting. So I mean, but bro, fucking Valentina, you know excited for that? I mean, it's it's gonna be decent. No, nah, I feel I, like you don't. I feel like you don't even know nothing about Valentina Shevchenko. I'm not. I'm not too excited. Yeah, I'm sorry. Know. It's a seven, bro. Seven no, no, it's okay. I'm gonna send you a highlight reel and watch your opinion change. I'll let you watch it after the show. But yeah, you. I you mean, if she cold, bad. she's cold. Gonna make, as fuck. It ain't gonna make me happy to watch the, her beat some white bitch ass, or not even white bitch, some bitch ass. Why? Because I know she's gonna whoop her ass. It's like okay. We know John Jones gonna win. She Dominic Reyes may come through with the rolls. Oh my God, I'm Dominic Reyes is going to get I'm slapped. Sure he's about to get this ass whooped, but it's going to be a good fight at least. Valentina's fights are always good. John Jones' last fight was not was not it, like it was cool because John, right. but it wasn't it wasn't yeah it wasn't that it wasn't great. No, even no. he said it was like a shitty performance. Like when he got chopped in the leg a couple times though, that shit was not anybody fault. Yeah, is his leg doing better? Who? John Jones. Jumped. Is it doing better? Yeah, obviously, bro. It was just calf kicks. He's fine. The the nigga to be worried about is um Tiago Tiago um Santos. Is he ever that coming nigga. back? Huh? Is he ever coming back? I know he hurt his whole fucking tendons and shit. I think he tore yeah. like meniscus and all types of shit. Yeah. Yeah, he's fucked up. Um, but that was a minute ago. He's probably closer to being fully back than he is um not so. You know what I mean? It's like he's past the halfway mark by now. But uh, yeah. I think I think it's cards gonna be pretty exciting. I'm more so excited for the last two fights, and Derek Lewis is always a funny fight to watch. It is because the after, it's yeah, yeah. I mean, his fights are also just funny. That, that big nigga, he's just funny. I really hope he wins though, because then he loses his last two or something. Nah, has he lost? Been losing? Oh, no, he didn't lose. No, that was last two. He won yeah. that last one. It was. Oh no, he won his last one. He lost the two before that. Okay. Oh, he won. I got no. knocked it. The, the one before that, it was the Russian dude. And I had to knock this Russian no, motherfucker yeah, yeah. out. I know, I know, but I'm saying, I'm saying the, like, the first fight we all saw with him was, uh, I think, the Alexander Volkov fight when he won the very last second of the fight. Mm -hmm. And then he lost to, he lost to Daniel Cormier and he lost to Junior Dos Santos. And then he won against Blagov Iv Ivanov. Are you looking at this right now? Yes. Okay, making sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, so he's coming off a win, but that last win we saw that fight that wasn't. He ain't beat that nigga up like that. Nah, he like held that nigga down on the ground. Yeah, so I, I want to see him knock somebody fucking head off, or he need to just call it quits. Cause I mean, like nigga, obviously, like if you don't come in looking good in this fight, it's like all right, obviously your heart's not in it, bro. You're just doing this to get your checks. Keep it pushing. 
Cause man, like, don't like, man, don't like niggas that just want to check. I don't. I, yeah, you know, I realize that. Yeah. Fuck that. Fuck y'all niggas getting money. <laughs> no, but I love Derek Lewis, but it's like, I don't know. I feel like you're putting yourself out there and not putting out your best work. It's like, that's dangerous too, man. It happens. I don't think it's dangerous. I think it's just, unless he actually, just, you know, getting his ass whoop, whooped. Mm. He ain't got his ass whoop, whooped. I guess. Not even in the Cormier fight. He didn't get his ass whoop, whooped. He just, you know, lost. I want him to knock that nigga out. That's what I'm saying. So he can do that fucking gorilla thing at the end. <laughs> yeah, I like that shit. All right, y'all. That's racist. He looked like a gorilla anyway, but I I wasn't even alluding to that. <laughs> Some nigga just look like apes. That's it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you want me to say. Some motherfuckers are pretty apish. That's it. Don't, don't slide, white people. Y'all look apish too sometimes. Fuck y'all. Oh hell yeah! Y'all motherfuckers looking like albino fucking chimps and shit. Yeah, don't think don't don't think we was letting that one slide. <laughs>